Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. Arena War is often regarded as one of the worst updates to come to GT Online, and while I do think that does hold true to some degree, Arena War did bring us one great thing, or maybe a couple if you count the open atomizer. It brought us the ability to make cars fly. Today I'm going to show you guys how you can take flight with your Arena War vehicles. And no, this doesn't require any cheating or modding to pull off, it's simply how the physics work within GTA Online. Some longtime viewers of mine will already know about this, as I did make a tutorial many years ago, however I've gotten lots of comments recently about people not knowing that this even exists, and so I'm bringing you this updated guide for shunt hopping. This trick will work with almost any of the Arena War vehicles, minus the bike, Basically, if the vehicle can be equipped with the shunt boost and the vertical boost, it can fly. And that's the first step, purchasing both the vertical boost and the shunt boosts for the car. For beginners, I recommend you using either the Sasquatch Monster Truck or the ZR380 as they allow for fairly easy control while in the air, but I will be talking about more advanced moves and some of the harder vehicles later in the video. The way that shunt hopping works is that the vertical boost obviously makes you jump up into the air, meanwhile the shunt boost is a left or right boost that normally is used to crash vehicles out of the way when driving. However, if you turn the vehicle on its side and then shunt boost upwards, the side of the vehicle will be facing up, therefore propelling you into the air instead. And because the shunt boost actively regenerates no matter what, you can combo this and keep jumping up and up and up. Hence the name shunt hopping. So to begin a shunt hop, get going a good amount of speed so that you have some forward momentum. Use the vertical boost by clicking the left analog stick, and once you're in the air, tilt the vehicle on its left or right side. I usually tilt it on its left side so that the right side of the vehicle is pointing into the air. And once it is on its side, activate the shunt boost depending on whichever side is pointing into the air. If the right side is facing the sky, hold the X or square button on PlayStation and hit R1 or the right bumper. If the left side is facing up, then you will press and hold X or square and the left bumper or L1. And from the first top, it's all about managing your forward momentum and keeping the vehicle on its side, as that enables you to continuously hop. For shunt hopping, it's also very important to know how mid-air vehicle control works. If you just rotate the analog stick, the car will flip around all over the place, but if you hold the handbrake, which is A on Xbox or X on PlayStation depending on your control scheme, this can be switched in the controls menu, which I recommend doing. I think the default is like R1 or RB as the handbrake. But if you hold the handbrake and then move the analog stick, the car will only rotate on one axis without flipping around a ton. Just look at my car when I jump here. Without the handbrake, the car will roll if I move the left analog stick, but with the handbrake held, it instead will rotate in a circle. While going straight, there are ways to increase and decrease your forward momentum, and it requires a good sense of mid-air control to do this. If you want to increase your forward momentum, if you notice that you're slowing down in the air, using the right side orientation, tilt the car a bit to the right, then use the handbrake air control to rotate the vehicle so that the front end is facing a little bit towards the ground, and the right side of the vehicle is facing in front of you a little bit while still facing up at the same time so that you stay in the air. And now when you shunt boost, the car will gain a lot more forward momentum at the cost of some height. And you want to do this for only a couple of hops at a time before returning to the standard position where you're just completely sideways. The reason that you need to tilt the vehicle to the right a bit before using the handbrake is because the handbrake mid-air controls will not work unless the vehicle is somewhat at a normal orientation. The wheels have to be somewhat facing the ground for it to work. If I'm upside down or completely on the side, the handbrake just doesn't let you control the vehicle. On the other hand, if you want to slow down and lose forward momentum, you basically do the same thing as before, but now we're going to tilt the other way so that the front is facing more into the air and the right side of the car is facing backwards a little. And when you use the shunt boost now, it will take away some of that forward momentum, and combining both of these together is useful for sustained flight and controlling your altitude so you don't get super high into the air unless that's what you want to do. If you're a beginner, practice this until you are able to chain a good amount of hops together going in a straight line. Next, let's talk about how to turn while shunt hopping. If you move the analog stick slightly to the left or right and use the shunt boost, the vehicle will move as you would expect, moving either to the left or right. This can be useful for dodging buildings or any obstacles that are in your direct path, but you're still going to be moving forward in that same direction in the end. Let's say you want to turn around completely and fly in the opposite direction. How would you go about doing that? This is done through a combination of hops, each slowly tilting in the direction that you want to go until you're facing that direction. You want to do just as you would for the simple dodge turn, you just tilt the vehicle to the left or right, but now instead of just doing that, we're going to be involving the handbrake turn to again further rotate the car to the right, like in this example. And just a tad, we don't want to completely overdo it, because if you turn too sharply, all your momentum will be gone, 
it's going to end up being a wide turn, but that's just the way it's done if you don't have much height. There is a more advanced method of direction change that you can use if you do have more height that I will discuss later. But yeah, that's pretty much as far as the basics go for shunt hopping. You now know how to take off, control the vehicle a little bit in the air, and once you get all that down, you can then move on to some more advanced maneuvers and vehicles, such as the Scarab Tank. Now, the Scarab Tank is a bit more difficult because, for whatever reason, if you get close to a building or any surface, the vehicle will try to recenter itself automatically, so you kind of have to really fight it to keep it on its side, which can be quite hard for a beginner to get the hang of. It does become a lot easier when you do get the mid-air handling down. The Cerberus can also be a little difficult, not only because of its gigantic size, but the Cerberus is also top heavy. So each time you hop, the vehicle will lean in the opposite direction, requiring constant correction from the driver. You'll have to move the analog stick to counteract the automatic movement it does after every hop, or you can just go with the flow and let it spin all the way around and hop on the other side instead. For a few advanced maneuvers you can do, this one is probably the easiest of them all, the flip-flop. After every hop, you tilt the vehicle to the other side and use the other side of the shunt boost. In this gameplay, I'm going from right to left and back to the right, and it's kind of fun to do, but it's not really that practical. Then we have the advanced turn. This is a more complicated way to change directions, but you will need to be higher in the air to do so. You basically want to kill all of your forward momentum so you enter a free fall, and then while falling, tilt your car in the complete opposite direction and use a few hops to gain your forward momentum back going the other way. You're going to lose a lot of height while doing this, and that's why you need to be up in the air a good amount before trying this. And finally, the most advanced maneuver of them all, one that only a select few can do consistently, and that is the reverse shunt hop, where you face your vehicle the opposite direction towards you, but still hop forward. And with enough practice, you will be able to pull off a lot of these moves. Anyways, that is how to fly with Arena War vehicles in GTA Online. I hope this is able to help those of you who are confused when you saw me flying around in a Scarab tank wondering how in the world I'm doing that. It really is a lot of fun. If you're ever bored in GTA Online and want something new or fun to do, definitely try out shot hopping. It's really fun. If you enjoyed or found the video helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GTA Online content. I want to give a huge shout out to my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.